In this video, we're going to remove a cylinder. Hey guys, what's up? In this video, we're going to dismantle at least part of this engine. Um, I'm just going to do, my focus will be on the front cylinder here and removing um, the head and the, the cylinder. I want to inspect what's going on. Um, <clears throat> you'll notice that I've already removed the intake and throttle body, which are basically one thing. The uh, headers have been removed and um, a couple of the brackets here and there to kind of, well, to free up space so I can get to the heads. Okay, so that's it. Um, the push rod covers come off later. So there's some O-rings here, everything, it's fine. The Buell, I do wanna say the Buell shop manual does say to remove these in sequence. It's um, one, two, it's either one, it's one, two, three, four. I'm pretty sure I did it out of that sequence. I think I did this one first and then whatever. Like I said though, the warning in that is if you remove it out of sequence, like I said before, you could you stand the chance of causing some warpage in the surfaces. That's if you don't plan to machine the head and potentially your cylinder. I'm I'm not in that boat. I am machining all this stuff. So I'm going to give. Um, I think I'm going to start with this side. I'm going to secure the head with my hand. Okay, you can see the head moving, so it should come off. There we go. That's a lot of oil. All right, let me uh, let me pour this oil out real quick. All right, so let's take a look. That's quite a bit of buildup. I'm probably gonna have to get new valves. Um, what's interesting is this one's so wet. It's very shiny. And that's either just raw, this probably had just raw gas being dumped in there. And the reason I think that that's the case is you can take a look at this carbon buildup on the piston head and you can see plainly just, that's a lot. Oh, let me show you something else you can do. You can look for a, just kind of a garage shade tree mechanic style check for clearance on the, on the piston to cylinder wall clearance. Just repeated myself, but you can, uh, let me move the camera over here for you. So you can, you can take the piston and don't wiggle the entire block, wiggle just the piston if it will. So that's not normal. That's, that's okay. This is, this is a, this is totally okay. I, I don't have anything holding it, but but you can attempt to wiggle the piston, and there's hardly any movement in that. Man, that's a lot of carbon. Hey, you Harley or Buell owners, if you've done this before, let me know. Um, this so this bike has thirty five thousand miles on it, and especially considering the amount of buildup on the exhausts and or the uh, the uh, valves looking at the crown of this 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 would appear to be a higher mileage engine to me 
I mean, okay, so th there's a number of things to consider here. One, if you go back and look at that exhaust video, um, I'll post a link up here for you. Oops, we're right there. For you to go check that other exhaust video where I, that thing, I don't know what was going on with it. Um, that was probably causing AFR issues, um, which it could have been dumping more fuel in here than necessary. I always seem to have some oddities with tuning the bike. There were some weird things that just happened and I'm not sure, um, I wasn't sure what they are. Now I think the problem is, is that I'm dealing with an engine with either higher mileage or far more wear and tear on it than what one would imagine would be there for 30, 35,000 miles. Um, the third part of that is that this is an air-cooled engine. You don't say! And so you would see a lot more carbon buildup than maybe on a water-cooled engine, but this is quite a bit to me. That seems a bit much. Again, this is my first Harley engine that I've ever pulled apart, but I have done other air-cooled engines. Uh, if anything's got a lot of stuff in it, it's gonna be a two-stroke, and that did not have nearly as much carbon buildup as that. So, anyways, just some, just some things, you know, stuff that's on my mind. These are the kinds of things that I think about. All right, um, so I'm tempted to just pull this off, but I don't know. Yeah, you know what? I'm just going to go for it. We're going to sacrifice this cylinder. What I wanted to do is keep the piston in the cylinder and raise it up so that I could just pull the pin and take the piston and the, uh, the cylinder off together as one unit. But I think what I want to do instead is I want to see, I want to see the skirt because these pistons are not going to be reused. I'm sorry. You know, I'm sure I could solve world hunger with these, with these pistons, but I'm not doing it. So I am going to go ahead and remove everything and care, being careful not to allow the rod to slap anything as I'm pulling. See, typically, I don't know if you can see, typically what you do is you'd stop uh, right about, as soon as you can see the pin, or feel the pin in this case, and you would remove the piston, the retaining clip out of the pin to remove the, uh, the piston from the rod. And I guess I could still do it. Wow, this still has a cross hatch in it. Well, that's, that is unexpected. But again, oh my gosh, that guy is, there we go. It was, it's fighting me. There's probably, oh, I know what's happening. Actually, I don't know what's happening. What's happening? Yeah, I'm down below the uh, crosshatch. Ooh, I need to stop. I need to stop. You guys are seeing it. You saw it before I did, more, most likely. So let me, let me get this away from my bottom end. I do not want any of that falling down in there. And luckily there is not, I don't see any trace of that rust down there. So that's good. So let me show you, actually I need to expose it a little bit more. I may end up accidentally pulling the piston completely out anyway. Because you have to clear it in order to um, exp Look at the size of that boy's head. Shh. I'm not kidding. It's like an orange on a toothpick. Expose the 
um, wrist pin to be able to slide it out. So let me show you now what I'm talking about. All right, so there's the, uh, see that, that ring right there, that's the clip that, that uh, retains the, the wrist pin and uh, the wrist pin is what's connecting the, the piston to the connecting rod. This is the connecting rod. That's the crank. That's the rust we don't want to get into the crank. Um, all right. Just looking down in there, it looks good. I, I still need to pull stuff apart. I need to do some quick checks on the, on the bottom end. I'm not gonna probably include that on this video. Um, so I think, let me go ahead and try to remove, see that little groove right there? That's a place where you can get some pliers in there and pull that pin, that uh, ring out. And um, from the other side, oh crap. <laughs> well, it didn't look like, I'll have to remove the push rod tube to, uh, to get to that side of the pin to uh, gently nudge it out. Um, you know what, heck with it. We'll just do it. We'll just make this. guys we're back um i won't subject you to that whole fiasco these allens were literally an eighth of a turn each they were in there pretty good and i had to use this is the only thing that would fit uh around the push rod tube to uh, get those things out so <laughs> just skip ahead on that um all right so let me get this clip out i did go ahead and put a rag down inside here some of you are probably screaming at me the entire time saying you know, do this, do that. And I was, I heard you. You know, guys, just calm down. Sometimes you just get, get out of hand. I hear you. Anyways, I also loop, uh, put some oil on this um, to help control any further particulates. Um, so let me go ahead and I'm going to, again, attempt to pull that snap ring out. And unfortunately, we're going to have to kind of cant the cylinder. I have a feeling this ain't going to work, guys. <laughs> I have a feeling we just don't. See, typically you want the, the cylinder, the piston at, at the bottom of its travel to do this or somewhere near the bottom. And we're not there, you know? So, all right. Again, you're not going to be able to see. My head's going to be in the way. But once I get the... the um, Piston pin out, etc. I'll bring you back. We'll show you what's going on. What did I do with my needle nose pliers? They're right here. Why didn't you guys tell me? I know one of you seen it. Nope. My needle nose pliers are not thin enough to get in there. I'm going to have to use a, a pick. Doggone it, this means it's going to fly across the garage. Unless my finger takes one for... Let me just get a rag. All right, the rag's going to take one for the team. This is... I'm trying to get behind it. Um... Oh, that's a huge noggin! That's a virtual planetoid! Shh. Has its own weather system! Shh. Heed! Move! 
There we go. Okay, I got behind it with the hook, the pick, and I'm kind of doing this blind. Typically, you want to watch it. My finger's going to have to take one for the team. Sorry, thumb. Sorry, index finger. Ah, all right, so this is what's... This is just the clip I was talking about holding the... the, the right there. That's what's holding in the, the piston, uh, the, the wrist pin. This is going right there. All right, let me get a... Let's see if I can just... Oh, no, that's not... Whew. Now, granted, that's going to have... Oh, no, it's coming loose. All right. This is a lot easier with a, a brass punch or a socket of similar size. Again, I have to come up higher on the, the piston travel. See, the, the wrist pin is... This is pretty much all the way out. Okay. Sweat increasing. All right, I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to use a brass punch. I'm not gonna hit it with a hammer, guys. Don't worry about that. I'm, I'm just gonna hit it with a, a, a sledgehammer. And I'm gonna knock it across the garage. All right. So this will give me a little bit more to... Nope, I can't move that. So I am gonna to have to tap it out. Don't like that. But it is what it is. See, it's pretty easy to get moving, but it's got enough fit fitment on the, the pen that I can't I can't move it by hand so all right I'm gonna have to see mm. this is very precarious I probably should have just there okay that's what I was worried about there okay So there you go, guys. That's the underside of the piston. There's a skirt. It's got it's coated. Uh, you'll see a lot of manufacturers do that. There's the scuffing I was wondering about. That's quite a bit. Um, hopefully you can see that well enough. So and that that got through the coating and into the aluminum. So. That had some wear on it. That's maybe that's normal. But here's the cross hatch. Hopefully you can see that down in there. Let me shine a light on it. Let's see that cross hatch. Whew, that's kind of heavy. So we still have cross hatch. Um, let's take a look at the. Uh, we're Rod. There's the rod. This is what we're looking at here. Um, this side of the engine wasn't leaking from the base gasket. So there's another close up of the uh, bottom end of the piston. I gotta remember that that guy's there. I'm gonna keep these as a single unit. Um, I'll probably, I don't know. I'm, I mean, those are not bad cylinders. So you saw the cross hatch in them. So I might be able to hone those out and keep them as spares or sell them. So if you're interested in some uh, Buell cylinders, let me know. I mean, you're going to have to get some pistons somehow, but you know, there's that. Um, the, I didn't do any damage to the, uh, the rod bushing. So that's good. When I, of course I used a brass, brass uh, drift to get that out. So it's a softer metal. That's that's also, that's bronze. So anyways, all right, guys. I think we're going to wrap this one up here. This video has gone long enough. Oh, there's your lifters down in there, for those of you curious. This has gone on long enough. I think I'm, I'm covered in sweat. This wasn't the plan today. I'm going to stop where we're at right now. And uh, um, next time you come back, that back cylinder will be off. 
Um, you know, look at that, man. The heck. And see, this mystery motor is getting to me. It's bothering me a lot. All right, comment down below if you have any pointers, any ideas, any theories about this engine. Um, or if you just enjoy the video, give it a like or dislike, whatever. You'll hurt my feelings a lot if you dislike it, I promise. I will not sleep tonight. Um, that said, um, thanks again for watching. Um, hopefully you're learning something as we move along. And until next time, peace out and keep it between the ditches.